All right, we've got these debug messages in place. So let's run it and do some drag and dropping and see what we get. All right, let's add a node. We'll add three nodes. Geez, there's a lot of stuff going on already. All right, let's clear this. Let's switch back to, uh, to task queue. All right, and do our little drag and drop. Oh my. Look at all this. From one item dropped, we get all this stuff. All right, so adding and dragging and dropping nodes shows us that the debug info isn't that helpful. So we need a way to see the call stack, so to speak. And a good way to do that is to write an indenter and also add some new lines to the entry point for the functions that trigger these call chains, which for us is namely add child and item dropped. So the idea of an indenter is based around the idea of a static counter that increments and decrements as you add and remove instance of it. It'll have a conversion function that converts it to a string so it can be used inside a debug statement. Its whole purpose is just to spit out a tabbed string. So let's do that right now. Let's go to our, uh, go to the top here, and we'll just insert this um, right above our, our class. Add a little divider, and we'll do struct indenter. And let's give it a static counter, private static int counter. Now remember, static variables need to be defined outside of the class, so we can just add that here, int indenter counter equals zero. All right, it's initialized now. And now let's add our conversion function, operator string. And this thing's pretty simple. It's just gonna do string str. We need to make it generate a tabbed string based on the value in the counter. So for int i equals zero, i is less than counter, plus plus i. And now we can just do string and add a tab like that. And now we just return it. So the next thing to do is to make the constructor, every time we create one, we in increment the uh, counter. And then every time we destroy one, we decrement the counter. So indenter counter plus plus. And then destructor indenter counter minus minus like that. Okay, so now we just need to, to declare local instances and use them in the debug statements. So we'll add one here, indenter, indenter. Uh, well, let's just make sure this works correctly. So we'll do indenter like that and do that guy. So this is what we're gonna add to all of our debug statements. All right, so all we gotta do is just copy it and swap it out here. Just uh, select this part and paste it like that. Super simple. So let's go do that now. Okay, once you got it pasted, uh, build and run. Take a look at the output. Add some tasks. Oh, look at that, that looks cool. All right, and drag and drop. Okay. This is much more helpful. So we can see item dropped, it calls that, then it calls this, and then all of these call this thing, and then this guy, this line right here, then calls this function, and this function calls all of this stuff. All right, now this is good, but we need to separate uh, each event with some new lines. So let's go back to item, uh, let's go back to item dropped and add child and add that there. All right, so where's our item dropped? This is our item dropped here. Or right, we'll start with add child first, actually. So we'll go add child and we'll do debug and just a pair of new lines. We'll add the same thing to item dropped. Right, let's run it again, see what we get. One more, okay, and drop. Very cool, that's much better. Our console output is much more helpful.